Hello, makeup friends. I would love to say that this is back by popular demand, but like literally nobody has asked for it. However, I have access to analytics and I know that you guys like when I get inebriated and talk about new makeup releases. So that is what we're going to do today. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I will not be at my finest and I will probably swear more than I typically do, but hello. My name is Kara, and like I said, we're going to talk about new makeup releases. Typically speaking, I rank them and I start with what I'm least interested in and move towards what I am most interested in. However, for the purposes of this video and because I am going to be drinking throughout it, I suspect that we're going to get a little bit more entertaining if we flip it around, talk about the stuff I'm interested in, work towards the stuff that I am definitely not, while I continue sipping and my diet cranberry and vodka. All right, before we get into it, let's address what we've got going on here on my lips. This is a liquid lipstick from Nabla. This is in the shade Coco. And then on my eyes, we've got this palette here from Christina Sicalius. This is, I can never say it properly, Leche del Sole, I believe. I remember looking it up on Google at some point. I think that's how you say it here. She is in all her splendor. She is very expensive, but also just so beautiful. Truly love this palette. All right. I have gone through Instagram. I have gone through, which accounts did I go through? I went through primarily trend mood, although honestly, trend mood, a little dicey. Uh, went through her. Now, you'll have to forgive me. YouTube, no, Instagram keeps taking her channel? No. Account? Good God. Instagram keeps taking her account away and I think currently if I look it up it is makeup on my radar. So I also looked to, I just said her account? I don't know for sure that it's a her. I don't know who operates the account. Perhaps I should look into that. Nope, I don't know who operates it. I'm assuming it's a girl but that's not a fair assumption. Anyways, I looked at her account for some new releases as well. So I have saved a bunch, and what I thought we would do is start with the stuff that I have actually bought but have not yet talked about on my channel. So if I can operate Instagram, this would go much more smoothly. Uh, here we go. Okay, first up, we've got this one here. This is from Basma Beauty. They are brand new to Sephora. They only have one product so far and it is this foundation stick. So this is the foundation stick for hydrating, buildable coverage and natural finish. I believe if I recall correctly on the Sephora website, it says that it is buildable from like light up to full coverage. We shall see. Uh, I have, like I said, ordered it. It has not yet arrived, so when it does, I am most definitely going to be putting it to the test and I will share my thoughts on it with you. It is available in 40 shades and obviously it's available on Sephora now, as well as this other item that I picked up. These are the new liners from Urban Decay. These are the 24-7 inks, uh, wow, can't read very well. 24-7 Inks Liquid Liner. I picked up the lime green one. Again, hasn't arrived yet, but I'm sure that I will feature it at some point on my channel. I am just intrigued by it, and who doesn't love a good colorful liquid liner? So I'm curious, picked it up. I will share my thoughts in due course. All right, so let's get into the items that I have not purchased, and I will tell you which ones I think I might and definitely which ones that I won't. So, first up, we've got the two new blush shades from Rare Beauty, and these have been on my love list since they hit the Sephora website. For some reason, they're not actually available in Canada yet, although they are available in the States. I have to wait till the very bloody end of March in order to buy these, and I highly suspect that I'm going to buy both because I cannot decide between the two of them. If you've not used these soft pinch blushes, like a little goes a long way. Like these could last you a lifetime and a half. Like you might need to bequeath these to a family member in your will because you only need like the tiniest amount. So I currently have one, it's like a bright coral shade. 
it can go from zero to 60 very quickly. I think these shades are gonna be far more approachable and a lot more forgiving. I think they are both stunning and I cannot wait to get them. So I will be purchasing them as soon as they actually are available to order from the Sephora website. Uh, next up, on the fence, but leaning towards, I'm just gonna go ahead and buy one of these. The newest product from Makeup by Mario. These are the Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Colors. And I just am very intrigued. Now I will say the packaging somehow makes me think of NYX. I'm not entirely sure why. Possibly because, there's the explanation, because they've done the same thing with their new, what are these called? Smooth Whips, which by the way, very, very good. Not the purpose of this video, but I really do like these. Uh, it's just like the, the fact that the color of the lipstick is the color of the tube. I think that's why I'm thinking NYX when I look at these. But, so I am very intrigued by these. I'm sure it's just a very standard lip gloss and that it's like not going to change my life. And yet somehow I'm just really drawn to them. The marketing pictures are getting me. The like super like wet reflective look of them. I'm just like, yes, please put it on my face. I would very much like that. That's a weird sentence to say. Context cues, we know what we're talking about. Okay, there is like a soft corally shade in here and then there is like quite a few neutral shades that I really am curious about and really want to have. I do not need any more nude lip glosses in my life, but will that really stop me from buying them? Probably not. So that's gonna take us to the newest palette from Nabla and I have to say, I freaking love Nabla. Like I love their whole ethos, I love their vibe, I love their customer service, I love their products, I love the outside packaging, I love the theming, I just, I really like Nomad. Uh, not sponsored, not even on PR list, no affiliate code. They, I think they know I exist, but like, only because I'm a consumer of their products. Like I've purchased from them, I've reached out to them in like a customer service capacity, doesn't matter. Anyways, all that to say, this is very pretty. It's very pretty. I don't know how much use I would really get out of it, at least not on like a day-to-day -day basis, but I don't know that that's gonna stop me from buying it. We will see. I am squarely on the fence about this currently, Got a lot of factors going against me. The dollar, like our dollar is worth peanuts compared to the American dollar, so it's just a really bad time to be buying stuff in US dollars. And also the shipping to Canada is just brutally expensive, so I have to like really want something in order to purchase from the US at this point because it's just so expensive. So we shall see. I think it is beautiful, like absolutely beautiful. The palette is $57 US and it will be available on March 28th on the Nomad Cosmetics website. Moving on from there, I did actually try, well, sort of out of curiosity, I added it to my cart just to see what the actual cost would be. And then I clicked out of the screen without completing the transaction. So these are the newest lip products from Nabla. These are the Beyond Jelly Sheer Supple Lipsticks, and they just look so very freaking comfortable. They are so pretty. They look like a tinted lip balm kind of situation going on. I will say when you see a lot of them all swatched out, they kind of, like there's a big selection of them that all look completely interchangeable. That's neither here nor there. I was never planning on picking up all of them anyways. The problem is, so does it say on here how much they are? Of course not, trend mood. That would just be really valuable information. If I recall correctly, they were in like the 20 to 25 euro rate? No, fuck, I don't know. They're, the website is in euro, which means absolutely nothing to me. So I always have to go to like a converter. We'll put it this way. I think it was gonna cost me somewhere in the neighborhood. It was either like 40 or $60 just for one. I think it was like 40 to $45 just for one lipstick. And as pretty as they are for essentially a tinted lip balm, I just can't justify that kind of price tag. What is far more accessible to me, however, are these lipsticks from NARS. So these are the Afterglow Sensual Shine Hydrating Lipstick and dear 
God, Nars, could you pick another horse to beat, please? Like, I'm just, I'm glad that it's not called, like, the orgasm lips or some nonsense like that. But, like, oh, my God, they are such tryhards over here with their whole sensual shine and blah, blah, blah. And honestly, I haven't seen the shade names, but I wouldn't be surprised. And, well, yeah, there's orgasm in there. And turned on. Yep, truth or dare on edge. Those aren't so bad, but, like... I'm surprised there's not a deep throat shade or like a, I don't know, something else horrifically sexual that just kind of makes you cringe, but at this point just like rolls off your back because like, who cares? Anyways, that aside, I have one of these like very similar styles of lipsticks in the matte formula and I actually really do like that. So I suspect that I would like these even more because as much as I love a matte finish, I love the look of it. I do prefer the sensation on my lips of a more hydrating lip product, and that's what this promises, and it looks like it's going to deliver. So I am curious about these. Again, I don't know that I'm actually going to buy it because it's $32 US, which means it's going to be in the like $40 range Canadian. Thankfully, I won't have to like ship it from the US, so I don't have to pay for that, but $40 is an investment in a lip product that I'm just buying because I'm curious. Anyways. Moving, oh Jesus Christ, okay, moving on from there, we've got Pat McGrath. I need to take a sip. Frankly, I'm kind of amazed that this lipstick has not transferred onto my teeth. I'm really happy about that. Good job, Nabla. Anyways, at the risk of sounding like, I don't know, a crotchety old bitch, I don't know, I am just so perpetually underwhelmed by Pat McGrath that I just yawn reflexively whenever I have to talk about new products from it. Not that I have to, but like, here we are. And I don't know, like people were going nuts about the fact that she's coming out with bronzers. Like who fucking cares? I don't know. It's just not that exciting to me. Like they're bronzers. So first of all, I don't get really excited about bronzers in any event. So I'm already coming at it with a bit of a bias, but also like her products are fine, but they're not like turn yourself inside out level which is what I feel like a lot of people treat her stuff like it is, and I just truly don't understand it. Again, not trying to like shit on the brand. I have N uh, Nabla, that's not Nabla, I have Pat McGrath products. Love her lip glosses, long been a fan. But like eyeshadows and her other powder products, I'm just kind of like, yeah, they're, they're fine. But I don't understand the fervor behind it. Like I just don't understand why people are so hyped up about her stuff. So. That being said, she's coming out with bronzers, so if bronzer's your shit, here you go. They're probably horrifically expensive. Uh, $39 US, it's going to be close to like the $50 Canadian mark, so <laughs> no. Not for a bronzer, not when I have a drawer full of them. There also appears to be some other shit that's available now, like a, an eyeshadow quad, which, if I'm being perfectly honest, this is the kind of quad that I would go for but I don't need it. I have this one, which basically has these exact same shades. So I just heard myself slur. Sorry about that. I didn't realize I was quite that intoxicated, but we're going to Powell, Powell. Yeah. I was gonna say we're gonna power through and then I said the entirely wrong word. So this is going super well. Okay. Uh, again, quad looks beautiful, but like if you have a neutral palette, you don't need this one. I promise it's not going to transform your life. Like I promise it's not. Also, this is me clearly cementing my role not on the Pat McGrath PR list. Not like I was ever going to get on it anyways, but here we are. Uh, it is very pretty, but like I, I don't need it. There's a blush, Divine Rose 3. Like, you, you can name it something else. You can. We all know what rose is. Like, they don't all have to be named Divine Rose for us to figure out that it's a rose tone. Anyways. Uh, and there's some, like, lip products and stuff as well. Again, the gloss. Highly recommend the glosses. Uh, if this is one of the matte trans, yes, it is a matte trans lipstick. Like, mm, don't do it. Like, they're just not comfortable. They're very drying. Don't like them. Lip gloss is the only thing that I can recommend. Okay, moving on from there, uh, we've got some stuff here from Burberry. 
I don't tend to talk about Burberry because like Burberry's just not on my radar. That's just not the life I'm living. Anyways, I saw these and I kind of wanted to include it in here because like Burberry. Really? That's your shade? Really? Okay, so like they've they've made a modicum of effort, but that's a whole lot of white shades in there. It truly is. Uh, that is a lot. So, at any rate, I mean, if you're my complexion and under, you're gonna have a shade here. If you're interested, it's a liquid foundation. Clearly, it's a liquid foundation. Anyways, it's a liquid foundation with 24-hour active wear, as opposed to 24-hour inactive wear. The fuck is active wear? Anyways, 24-hour active wear, long-lasting, and weather protection. What in the hell is weather protection? Like, we've moved on from blue light protection and now we have wet, like, is it gonna hold an umbrella for me if it starts raining? I have a blowout right now. I cannot get my hair wet or it will curl. Is this gonna help in that particular situation? I live in Canada. Yes, today was like spring number three, but winter's going to come back again before we get to final spring. Is this foundation going to be shoveling out my driveway for me? What in the hell is weather protection? Perhaps if I had finished reading the post. Inspired by the innovative fabric of the iconic Burberry trench coat, uh, the trench protect technology acting as a shield. It creates a thin, water-resistant, yet breathable film, provides resistance against water, humidity, sweat, and heat, protect, mattify, and hydrate the skin. Okay, grammar aside, um, so basically it's just like a somewhat water-resistant foundation. Aren't they all? Like, I, I'm truly mystified. So let's move on from there, shall we? And let's look at, like, what in the hell is this? I hate the layout of this. Um, all I can see when I, like, look at it, all I can think is that, like, Hungry Hungry Caterpillar or Very Hungry Caterpillar or, like, the... Whatever the hell the caterpillar... You know the one that, like, on Saturday it eats a leaf and a tree and a cupcake and a sausage and a cookie and a whatever the fuck? That one? That's what I see in this, and I cannot unsee it. And I just, I hate the layout. I hate that there's like a split pan on the top right, but a full pan on the back. I, I just, I hate it. I do like the wood grain, but that's the only thing I like about it. So that's going to be a very easy pass. And then we slide our eyes to the left, and I don't know what in the hell that mascara is, but it, oh, that's an eyebrow gel. Oh. Not much better, but I'm glad that's going nowhere near my eyes. But like, why is it a fucking disco ball of jet, like, brow product? I, like, whose brows is that working on? That might work on like the very front part of mine, but like you get to the tail side and I have the feeling it's just gonna be a huge mess. Easy pass for both of these for me, easy pass. Okay, and now, Wet n Wild. Sesame Street. I truly don't know what demographic they're going for with this. Like, clearly it's not the people who are actively watching Sesame Street at this point, but, like, Sesame Street has also been around since, like, the 60s. So are you also marketing yourself to those who are in, like, the 60-plus category? Because I highly doubt that. I watched it growing up in the 80s, but, like, I'm 43. I don't think you're trying to entice me with like Oscar the Grouch. And I don't know, like has enough time passed that like teenagers would find this nostalgic? I truly confused. Truly confused. Um, also this picture just like freaking causes me so much anxiety. There is just so much going on that I genuinely cannot digest what is all in this picture. There are so many products available in this mashup. There's a makeup brush holder, there's a brush set, there's, oh my gosh, eyeshadow palette, there's sponges, there's lashes, there's lip products, there's lip scrubs, there's face masks, there's like basically you name it, and they shoved some sort of Muppet-like character on top of it. I just, I can't. Um, 
like, okay, so like objectively it is cute. It is cute, but again, I just don't know who they're marketing this to. Like, I just, I just don't understand. Because even the shades in the eyeshadow palette are basically primary colors. And it all just looks very juvenile, if I can say that. Like, it, I, I don't, I don't know who they're marketing this to. Because, like, I have a 10, almost 11-year-old daughter, which these products look like they would be marketed to, like, her age and maybe a few years older. But, like, if I asked her if she wanted Sesame Street stuff, she would look at me like I had three heads. So, huh? Anyways, let's move on to what I think might just be like the blandest release that I have seen in a while. I don't know what this is. So Buxom, which honestly has become a brand that I just keep forgetting about, like they have to be on their last legs at this point, right? Like if they closed down, if they made an announcement within 2023, maybe extending into 2024 that they were like, closing up shop, I would not be surprised. It would be like, yeah, that tracks. I'm kind of surprised that you haven't already, to be honest. Anyways, they're still kicking, um, but not really doing themselves any favors. So <laughs> this is the Summer Babe collection. There are three products in here. There's the All Over Bronze Palette, a Plumping Lip Oil, and a Babe Glow Stick. It all looks essentially the same to me. And it really does look like some of those are gonna to struggle to show up on my skin tone. That's saying something. I'm surprised that they don't have a deeper option available with this as well, because I mean, Buxom's not known for like releasing a bunch of stuff all at once. So you'd think they'd wanna at least like double their chances of selling this shit by including a lighter and a deeper option, but I don't know. I don't make the rules over there and this is what they've gone with and I am not interested and I will not be buying it. Then we have something that honestly is just the name is really off-putting to me. This is the Face Hack Precision Sculpting Bronzer. Who thought that naming their product Face Hack would be a good idea? Also, it looks like a straight up deodorant that she's just like wiping across her face. I just, I don't know. It's just not for me. I don't like the name. I don't like the mechanism. I just don't really get it, to be honest. But if you're interested, it will be available on March 28th on the Freck Beauty website, as well as on Sephora for $18 US each. Okay, we're getting to the end here. We've got two more products to talk about. So the next one is from Huda Beauty and this is the Glow Wish Bright Light Hydrating Sheer Vegan Concealer. God damn, I hate when they put so many names in the titles of the products. Like it does not need to be that complicated. Uh, okay, but even just from the name of it, Sheer Concealer, no. Have you seen what goes on on this face underneath this makeup? Hell no, Sheer is going nowhere near these dark circles. I need full coverage. But also like Sheer, can, why the hell would you buy it then? If it's so Sheer, why are you buying it? Just put a little eye cream under there and away you go. Live your life, I just don't get it. 15 shades, it's coming soon to Sephora and it will be $27. And I am absolutely not buying it for a few reasons. One, Sheer, that, that's just asinine in my opinion. I have very dark circles. If you don't have very dark circles, sheer might be your thing. For me, absolutely not. Uh, but also, I tried the Glow Wish Tinted Skin, whatever the hell it was called. I'm sure it had too many names for my brain to retain. And it was atrocious. It was so greasy and so heavy that even just applying it to my skin, how do the kids say it now? It gave me the ick. Did I use it correctly? I will be 43 in a few months. I think I did. Regardless, it gave me the heebie-jeebies, did not like it, wanted to wash my face immediately. And so if this is part of the Glowish line and if this performs in any way like the Glowish skin tint, I want it absolutely nowhere near the fine lines underneath my eyes because holy shit, that's gonna be a mess. 
Okay, speaking of things that are not coming anywhere near my face, this stuff. Uh, this is the new Plush Blush Blurring Cheek Tint Collection from Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. There are some pretty shades, but they're coming from Jaclyn Hill. I think she's a morally bankrupt human being. I truly do. And that it's been very evident for a very long time that she does not care what the impact of her own actions are on other people. Way back at the very beginning, when she basically scuttled her collab with makeup geek, Marlena. She didn't care about that. Marlena has talked about this herself on her Twitter account. That basically, Jacqueline's response to her was, well, what do you want me to do? I don't know, maybe follow through on your promises? Like, do the bare fucking minimum? Don't chase a higher paycheck just because it happened to dangle itself in front of you? There's so many options available to you other than screw over your friend. As well, most recently, stealing the brand name from a small creator who reached out and basically begged that she not do that. So many other words available in the English language and others. She didn't have to stick herself with an English word. So every word that has ever existed was available to her as a brand name, but she had to choose the one that was already established. And then she had the audacity to laugh about it afterwards and basically mock the situation. If that doesn't scream that she is morally bankrupt or that she is so, I don't know, just so motivated by money that she truly doesn't care what impact she has on other people and what legacy she leaves behind, then I don't know what does. Fuck her, and you can quote me on that. And on that, I am going to wrap this video up here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I will see you in my next one, and until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.